non-linear factor and you can see a new pattern. And although I've only met my colleague three, four hours ago, I'm perfectly sure that's exactly how his brain works as well. But I think we all do it. It's not about creativity, it's about being able to spot the new patterns. We use terms like innovation. Have any of you got a, a definition of innovation? It's funny, I ask innovators that and they also say, uh, no. <laughs> Let me give you one I work with. The exploitation, the successful exploitation of new ideas. So from a commercial perspective, those ideas have to be new to them and new to the people that consume. It doesn't mean they're new because there are very few things that are new. But, but to achieve this, I don't know how many of you are in big businesses or have been a part of them. Certainly those of you that are in government will know what I'm talking about. Everybody looks for a process and the process is normally linear. There's no accident that we talk about innovation funnels or innovation pipelines or as if you just have to add one step after another. This is where we were going to do some drawing but there's nothing to draw. Imagine a line. We start here and we need to be here so we go this part of the process, this, then you do that, blah, 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 blah. It just doesn't work like that. It's never worked like that. I voraciously consume information. I love to know. I can't bear a project that's anything less than 50% learning and attempt to produce non-linearity into it because I know that's where I'll find the unexpected patterns. Whereas industry consistently, and government also in my experience, consistently is looking for the grail of the process that you can force anything into, press the button, and what comes out is the answer. Now, if there's anybody in this room that has successfully managed to have, produce a flawless linear process that delivers unexpected brilliance at the end of it, I think it'd be very rich. <laughs> So nuclear thinking is about non-linearity and finding ways to teach people who are entirely about linearity how to absorb it, love it, make it their friend. Je crois on a la même on le la même façon de penser par rapport à la linéarité de la pensée qui était très 19e liste industrielle avec un début une fin et la pensée contemporaine et notre pensée en général qui est beaucoup plus en rhizome en En, en, c'est comme des arbres je plante, je plante une forêt pour, pour montrer des arbres pour montrer des façons de penser et entre ces arbres, entre ces branches il y a même des ponts qui se créent tout ça et en fait cette, cette façon de penser pour la montrer en fait il faut, faire, il faut passer sa vie entière être décidé à un moment donné d'être l'artiste de, de cette représentation là et en fait cette liberté là parce qu'en fait on ne on me demande jamais de faire quelque chose de précis on ne demande jamais Enfin, on me demande quelques fois, mais c'est-à-dire qu'on ne on, on va pas me demander en premier, on ne m'attend pas quelque part, on ne me demande rien du tout au départ. Moi, je suis libre de faire ce que je veux. Et c'est ce qui est important, justement, cette possibilité, c'est de montrer ces rhizomes dans tous les sens et de faire des choses qui ne servent à rien. Il y a aussi ça beaucoup dans, dans l'idée d'être artiste, c'est de, de, de faire des choses qui ne servent à rien. Alors, je, je, inventer tout un système d'objets qui viennent de mes dessins, de mes pensées, de mes conversations, qui s'appellent les POF, les prototypes d'objets en fonctionnement, les POF. Et c'est des POF, c'est des objets qui ne servent a priori à rien. Et peut-être un jour, ils sont pris en charge par des gens et qui peuvent servir à quelque chose. C'est une sorte de... un, un artiste ou un créateur même, c'est un puits d'idées dans lequel il y a plein de choses à prendre. Je pense que... Euh, je, I think that we have... Uh, at a certain moment, all the, the possibility to do something with all our sense, probably all part of the body, the, the view, the ear, the, the, the kiné, uh, everything. And uh, at this moment, you understand that you can do something with that. We, we can do some metaphysics or something like that. I don't know. We can speak. Transformation. Transformation, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Probably. The, um, I'm trying to find another way of putting that. It makes complete sense at the beginning of the 21st century to put it all back in the box again. If you look at what happened post the Renaissance, the sort of polarization or the institutionalization of certain ways of working or I'm a this, I'm a that, I do that. The, the reason why this is so pressing 
is, is less to do with our art education or our artistic education, it's the fact that we are now progressively more exposed to it because of the extraordinary transformational issue brought about by the internet and the World Wide Web. And it's a very banal thing to say that the web transforms what we do. But let me give you a little story that might help this, because this is a fundamentally paroxysmal shift in how we are. At the beginning of the 20th century, when uh, Westinghouse and Edison were fighting each other to bring electricity to the east coast of the United States, um, everybody said, ah, oh, wow, the electricity is coming. And they talked as if it was an it, a new thing, it was an it. And they said, the electric light, the electric railway, the electric heating. It took 20, 30 years for people to just talk about light and heat again because of the thrall of it. So they talked about the electricity. Electricity isn't an it, it's a how. The internet is not an it, it's a how. It's another giant pivotal change of being able to talk to others 24-7, virtually for nothing. This, this is the Middle Ages again. <laughs> Don't you realize this? We're back to the Middle Ages. If the blacksmith is crap in the village, we all know immediately. But now it's come back again. But the village is the size of the world. That sets up an entirely different immersive dynamic. So we all mix anyway. We cannot not do that. What comes out of it is something new, which is those that pr produce what I call the organizational principle, those are the polymaths, those are the ones that can see over the edge and see how it connects, and the guilds, the craftsmen, who can actually do that. And this is something that I truly believe is happening. And this is what I think is so exciting about what is happening to the artist or how we define it. We had a fantastic discussion at lunchtime where you were saying, you know, it's wrong to judge the artist by the artifact that they create. Mm -hmm. Is that, did I get that correct? Yeah, yeah. You know, it is the act of doing and why and what went into it. They, so, in the activities that I do as well, it is the, trans the transformational processes are not necessarily the end artifact. They're the way in which one has actually set about doing it and engaged others in it. Yes, and, and, and it's true because I think really, and we, we spoke about that at the lunch, that uh, when, when you are a creative artist, you can, you can catch in a lot of different ways, a lot of different middle, what you want to do, but you don't know it at first. You don't know where you go, but you, you make a mix of everything and you have the possibility to be, uh, to not be only here, but to be in another middle, but you can be a, a policeman and a bourgeois and an artist and a, and a burglar at the same time. And it's, it's very important to, do, to, to, to be like that every time. It's a way to be an artist. And this is terribly frightening to people that think they just do one thing. Yeah, of course. So you say to a business, be more creative. This is a terrifying, corrosive property. If you've got, uh, it's very interesting to look at very mature, unindustrialized societies. So you have to go back thousands of years to spot some of those. But if you're interested to look at it, where a series of relatively simple rules are engaged, but actually most of your life is about gathering your food or doing what you're doing, is how much, how much art there was <laughs> in those cultures that when you don't have to do all of that, because if you're an Aboriginal American Indian and there's 10,000 of you in a country that's, whatever it is, 20 times the size of France or something, you're not occupied with a lot of that. You're, you are doing, you're a human doing, you're not a human being. I think you're right, I think that we are, our, our culture propels us more in that direction to conform. But then that brings us back to the necessity for the heretic. Something changed because of art. It's one example. There is a lot of. For example, last, last year I did a, sh a show in in uh, in Tokyo, and it was uh, my idea. It was. Uh,